Good evening and welcome, welcome back to the question and answer series for Anash.org. I want to begin thanking the many people who keep on writing in their shalas and their questions, thanking them for sending it in and I want to apologize for the people which I won't be able to answer all their questions this week because it came in a lot of questions the last week or two and we are limited in time but in Mirz Hashem through the following weeks we will come to your questions in Mirz Hashem and we'll get to it another thing which I want to, want to mention uh, there is a big oilam a lot of people are listening to the shirim and are diversified people so you have all kind of people are listening that means Jews and non-Jews even men and women boys and girls so I would like to ask all the people who are writing questions that they should consider before they're writing the questions that we won't be able to address publicly at a public forum some questions which is not appropriate for a public forum. I will answer that via email how it was sent but I won't be able to answer it on a public forum because not, not all the questions could be answered on a public forum. So at least at least you'll get an answer privately but uh, don't expect that all the questions that should be answered publicly because not er everything is for public consumption. And now we'll get to the questions which we get, we have, we received, and we'll go on. A follow-up question. Last week he spoke about coffee on the airplane. Um, the question is now: What is about what about coffee from an unkosher restaurant, from McDonald's? Starbucks, etc. The answer is like this. We spoke specifically last week on airlines because airlines, I know the system, I verified it, and also two or three weeks ago we spoke about coffees in a gas station, which is basically a very simple coffee machine. But when you come to a restaurant, an unkosher restaurant, over there you're going into serious problems. Because over there, they do use other kind of utensils, they use dishes, they wash it together with not really non-kosher dishes. So when you're talking about coffee, consuming coffee from a restaurant, which is a trafer restaurant, you cannot use that. Only from the airplanes, because they have a specific, the way how they make coffee, specific coffee maker, the same will go also to gasoline stations, so therefore, you could use, but when you're talking about restaurants, you shouldn't use it if it has non hexer at all. Question. Are we allowed to move to our new house after the Tainas Shavusiba Thomas? Same question is, are we allowed to use furniture that might arrive in the three weeks? May we may may new countertops be installed during the three weeks? Moving in the three weeks is not a lekitchil, it's not kedai. So therefore, like the Rebbe writes in one of the letters, that you should put in stuff in the apartment before the three weeks. That means you already moved in before the three weeks, and then even though you are coming over to your apartment to sleep and bringing over the rest of the stuff in the three weeks that's not considered moving in the three weeks because you moved already before the three weeks regarding the other two questions are you permitted to use furniture which will come in three weeks yes there's no problem the same will go to the third question to install countertops in the kitchen in the three weeks you are permitted to buying stuff and using stuff Things which you have to make a shechianu, you don't buy. That means new clothing, a new car, or these things. So we, we try not to buy. But uh, a countertop to fix, finish a kitchen, or furniture, etc., you could buy 
even in three weeks, of course not in the nine days, but in the three weeks you could buy it. If a frat, when you bought it beforehand and it's gonna only arrive in three weeks, for sure there's no problem at all. Question. I like to braid my chalas, freeze them, and bake them as needed. When do I take challah? Okay, this is a little bit a complicated question, and we'll get to it momentarily. But first I want to say that you have, to, in order to take challah with a bracha, you have to have a shir. There's a machloik is what the shir is, but since we go to according to the shir of Rabbi Chaim Noah, so in order to make a bracha on a fresh challah, you have, the shir is three pounds and 10.9 ounces. If it's less than that, if it's more than two pounds and 12.1 ounces, you take challah without a bracha. So from two pounds, 12.1, till three pounds, 10.9, you take challah without a bracha. If it's more than that, you take challah without a bracha. Now, now the question is like this. You are making a dough which has the shir challah. It means it is, let's say, four pounds. But you are going to divide it, braid it, divide it, freeze it, and you're going to take it out every year of Shabbos, and then you're going to bake it. And when you're going to bake it, you're not going to have a shear. Because if you bake it, you have the shear. So, of course, there's no problem. You're going to bake it, you don't have to have a shear. So, there's a machloik in Gemurah, if a person makes a dough, a manas lachalik. That means you're making a dough in order to divide it afterwards in separate, bake it separately. Now, the Gemurah over there talks about five ladies which give their dough to a person who makes yeast. He makes a dough, makes it, he makes, makes it should become yeast, and then he gives it back for the people. says, if somebody makes a dough in order to divide it, that means for the five people which gave them, gave him the dough, then you don't make a, it's not Mechir Bechala, Rish Lukish says it is Mechir Bechala. Most of the poiskim rishoinim, pasking like Rabbi Yochanan, that you make a dough and you, it's to, the, to, to divide it, you don't need to take challah. But there's a machloikas, a poiskim, what does it mean that you divide it? So there's four shittas. I don't want to go into all the four shittas, but some poiskim say that is only if you divide it for four, five extra people. You divide it for separate people which are not part of your household. Then you don't have to make challah. You take challah. But if you divide it for your own consumption, then you are machif to take challah. Other poets can say no. Even if you divide it for yourself, you put it in the freezer and every week you take out a couple of challahs and you bake it and it doesn't have the shear, it's not machif bachala because you made the dough in order to divide it. Again, so we have a machloikas if it means only when you divide it for other people or you divide it for even for yourself. And there's other machloikas in too. As kumas apoiskim is that whenever you divide it not for other people, just for yourself, you should take challah when you make the dough, even though it has a shear, take challah with without a bracha. Do not make a bracha then because you're going into a suffolk, maybe you're not machif to take challah. So therefore, don't make a bracha. So if you have anything when it comes to a bracha, and you, you don't know if you need to make it, you don't need to make you don't make a bracha. But to take challah, you should take challah, and without a bracha, and uh, then you could use it. Question. I put on by mistake my Rashid film and made a bracha. Then I realized that, that I put on my Rabbani Tam, and it wasn't my Rashid film. I made the bracha, so I removed it afterwards and put on the rashet film, but did not make again a bracha. Was that the correct thing, situation to handle it? Yes. When a person makes a mistake and he puts on his rabbi tam's film and he makes a bracha, and then he realizes it that it was his rabbi tam and it's not his rasha, so 
when he takes it off and he puts on right away afterwards his Rashid film, he does not make a bracha. The the Chivim Beshpatechel Yankov from the Agd Yankov, which he writes that there's a Mekir Akabula from the Chsidim from the Rebbe of Lublin, that the person who makes puts on Rabbi Tam film every day, if he made such a mistake, he should not make an other bracha when he puts on the Rashid film. If he doesn't put on every day Rabbi Tam film only from time to time and he made such a mistake, then he should make a bracha. Because that goes into Indian for Nimlach, it's then you should make a bracha. But if a person makes puts on every day Rabbi Tam's film, and once he made a mistake and he puts he put it on before Rashi and he made the bracha on it, he should not make a bracha on Rashi film. So he did the correct thing. It's interesting to note that he brings also the Mishpatei Chayyankov that there's a saying by Chesidim that a person which is makpat to put on film Rabbi Tam film every day. Mehashamayim, they're going to make sure that once in his lifetime he should make this kind of mistake and he should make a bracha on Rabbi Tam's film. So basically, getting back to your question, yes, he did the correct thing. If it happens, you don't make again a bracha on Rabbi Tam if you put on film Rabbi Tam on a daily basis. Question I bought a box, a 50 pound box of chicken bottoms. Several of them. The lower part of the legs is broken. Some of them have red spots. Are these problematic? The answer to this question is like this. When a person takes a bottom of the chicken and he sees that the bone is broken, if the bone was broken when it was alive, it's problematic. Might be, might be trifle. Might be not, but it might be trifle. You're going into a Suffolk, you have to ask a Rehya Rov, bring it to it, to him, and show it to him. If it happens after it was geschachten, then there's no problem. Now, most of the bones which is broken on a chicken which you buy in the store, most of them, most means Rubuk Kula, will happen after Shechita. The machine which takes off the feathers has a big power and that breaks a lot of times bones. Most of the time it's from that that machine. Chutzmeze, otherwise there's a person who usually goes through the chickens and checks these things. But it could still happen, a broken bone, which was which happened when it was alive, and it's a problem of trifles. So the easiest thing to, to see, to check it out, is to open it up and look at the bone. If the bone is broken, but it's clean, there's no blood around, not dried blood around the broken piece of bone, then pastus is probably it happened from the machine. Because if it happened when it was alive, it should have been dry blood around the bone. If he sees over there blood, or even if he sees on the, the meat, uh, like uh, uh, a bl bl not a blood spot, but you, you see a hole, and over there there's physical blood. Then it means that it was happened when it was alive. So again, most of the time it will happen after the shechita, but you still gotta look for it. And you still, if you have a broken bone, you gotta look. So the the easiest way is to do it: to rip apart that piece of meat, to check the bone, take out the bone, and see when it's broken. If it's clean, 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 and there's no blood stains over there or around at the area even though there is blood pa patches around because all over it could be some kind of blood patch but that, that's not blood even though it's red then you know it's from after shechita and you don't have to worry if you see blood physical blood or dried blood over there you know it happened before the shechita and then that chicken is non-kosher follow-up question. Last week he spoke about putting a chala on top of a pot of cholent. The question was, can I put a chala on an empty pot? The answer is yes, you could put, if you want to warm up your, your chala, you could take a pot out of your, of out of your cabinet, 
turn it around, turn it over, and you could put on top of it the challah, it should become warm. As I mentioned last week, since it's a yuvash, it's dry, there's no bishl, there's no afia, since it was already baked, so there's no problem. So you could take a pot out of the cabinet and turn it over and put it on top of it. Now, although we hold the poiskim trace day hold that the pot is a keilishim alachtal iser, that means it's a thing which is made only for iser, because in a pot you only cook. Once upon a time, the poiskim write that a, a pot is not a keilishim, it's a keilishim alachtal heter. It's made for usable things on Shabbos. Because once upon a time they used to store food in a pot. Nowadays, when you have all kinds of containers, plastic containers, nobody stores in a pot food. It's only made to cook. So automatically it becomes a keli shemalach iser. So therefore it's muktza. But the answer is, we know a keli shemalach iser is still meter if you use it at a That means if you want to use it for a thing which is permitted, so there's no problem. So again, we're going back to the question, you could take out the pot, although it's it's uh, Mixer machmas, it's a kelish machtal iser, but since you want to use the tzorich gifoy, it's not mixer. Question I made a bracha berches amoitzi and did not eat yet, and I heard one of my family members making a bracha. Am I allowed to answer umain on his bracha? The answer is no, you cannot answer umain because it's a hafsik. And if you may answer umain, You'll ha- you have to make a bracha again because from making a bracha of a moitzi until eating anything we say in the middle is going to be a hefsik so therefore if it has no shaykhs with the part of what, what, what you're going to do now so saying a bracha a omen on somebody else's berch samoitzi or somebody else's alatilas yadayim then it's a hefsik but if you made a berch alatilas yadayim and you you dry your hands and you're sitting down before making the moitzi. You hear somebody else making a bracha of Allah tells the time. You could answer umain. There's no problem. But between hamoitzi and eating, it's a hefsek. Question: Am I allowed to sharpen a knife, a milchig knife, on a sharpener? A knife sharpener which is flashix. The answer is you could, if the sharpener is a dry sharpener, you have no problem using one sharpener for milchix and flashix. And the truth is you could even use it for a non kosher knife too, if it's clean. Again, if everything has to be clean, if it's clean, the knives are clean, and you sharpen it only when it's clean, you have no problem. Because it's clean, so there's basically no problem of food. Now the question is, when you sharpen it, it becomes hot. The answer is, even though it becomes hot, we have a klal, ein b'liya yoitzi mekayla lekayla That means, a uh, pot which ta- gets in taste in the pot, that means a pot which is basically flyshix. And right next to it, you have a pot which is milchix, and both are cooking, but there's no steam coming out. But they touch itself. That means you have a milchige pot cooking, a fleshige pot is cooking, and they touch each, they touch each themselves, each other, but there's no any water between them. So we say there's no problem because the taste which when it, which is going in into the milchige pot will not go into the fleshige pot without any liquid. So if you have two pots, one is milchig, one is fleishig, although it's hot, if there's no liquid between them, there's no problem. So coming back to our shala, you have a knife which is milchig, you have a sharpener which is basically fleishig. I don't know how you come fleishig, but let's assume it is fleishig. And even though it's hot, but it's dry. So the blea, which goes which is in the knife will not go into the sharpener and the same vice versa but if you use water because I think that some commercial um, sharpeners do have water so then there's a, that, that's a problem but if you don't have 
at least for trifles. But if you don't have, it's a dry one, you could use on the same knife sharpener for milichiks and flyshiks, and there's no problem. Question. I live in a town which there aren't a lot of Yidin. And most of the weekdays, we have no minion over there. I am Rahman Leslan Oval on, on my pa- one of my parents and I don't have a minion. Do I need to pay for Bokharam? They should come to me, be there during the weekdays in order that I should have a minion to say Kaddish? Or do I need to travel an hour and a half to the closest place where I have a minion which is a lot of headaches and it's on Cheshm of Afut Samayunas? Or I don't need to do that and what is the guidance? The answer is, a person is not mechiev to spend a lot of etzuas and a lot of, t- of his, a lot of his time in his life for a minion. There's a matafrayim, the famous matafrayim, in the back of a sefer. He has elches kaddish, and over there in Shar Gimel Siv Gimel he writes that the person should do only what he could do, and he doesn't g- has to take extra mes- measures in order to say Kaddish on his father. So if you need to bring Bacharam, which is a big expense, they should stay by you all year, and uh, sleep by you, and have food by you, and they should want to stay and pay them, or you have to drive three times a day to a minion, an hour and a half, two hours, you're not mechif to do it. But if you're not mechif to do it, at least make sure to give tzedakah and learn Mishnayas, especially that you don't have him at least, Learn Mishnah is extra and give Tzedoka that at least he should have, his Neshoma should have an Aliyah. Okay, we're going to stop here and we're going to continue Mir Tashem next week. And please send in your questions to inbox at anash.org. Good night.